and I am convinced that nothing can ever separate us from God's love, neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither our fears for today nor our worries about tomorrow, not even the powers of hell can separate us from God's love. No power in the sky above or in the earth below, indeed nothing in all creation will ever be able to separate us from the love of God that is revealed in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Romans 38 through 39. This is your verse of the week. You are listening to the listenings only on mypohm.com. Brought to you by Purpose of Heart Ministry. Coming back live. Well, good morning, folks. Good afternoon. Ladies and gentlemen, tonight I bring to you the most beautiful lady I have ever seen in the whole galaxy. The one who stole my heart. Ladies and gentlemen, Christine! Hi, Christine. Hi. How are you? I'm great. Good. So I'm going to ask you the first question, and it's the same question I ask everybody that comes on the show, and that is, what is your purpose of heart? Well, that's a great question. Um, my purpose of heart is, you know, serving Jesus first and foremost, and always um, Jesus first in everything that we do, and then everything falls into place. So loving you, helping you, raising my kids, it's like if I'm serving the Lord, I'm able to do all the things that I'm supposed to. So, yeah, that's my purpose of heart, serving the Lord first and foremost and always. Well, I love it. <laughs> I love you. <laughs> <laughs> I love you too. <laughs> all right. And we just celebrated an anniversary. Yes, we did. When was that? August 31st. 10 years. 10 years? Yay! <laughs> and what, what did you get for your... I got the most special present ever from you. You made me a song. And I, I did? Love it. Yeah. It's awesome. Amazing. And I love it. <laughs> What's it called? I'm a fool for you. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're going to take a listen to that real quick. And then we're going to get into Christine's testimony. I'm a fool 
There it is, folks. I'm just a fool. I hope you enjoyed it. That is a song I wrote for my wife on our 10-year anniversary. It was uh, it was it was fun making it. I enjoyed it, and uh, if you didn't, don't tell me because I'll punch you. <laughs> just kidding. All right, now we're gonna get into the testimony of my wife. Yes, I just want to say I love my song. It's amazing. <laughs> it's one of the most precious gifts I could have gotten that you could have made for me and given me. Oh, um, yes, you're my... You make me blush. <laughs> <laughs> you're my gift. My gift from God. <laughs> if you didn't know, Nathaniel means gift gift of God. Mm -hmm. Gift yes. from God. Gift from God. Yes, and he's my gift from God. It really is true. Um, but I want to say the Lord has done a lot for me. Um, he's brought me from a lot and... Um, I just want to say that he is awesome. God is so good. But uh, I was raised in, into a broken home. Um, my mother had, well, she was expecting me and um, she wasn't married. And I was born in October of 1988. And um, my dad, my birth dad, had an accident at work and was in a coma for about a year and he actually passed away in September of 1989. So the beginning of my life, I've never met my birth dad. And from there, my mother um, went down the wrong path and um, started getting into the wrong things, into a lot of sin. Um, she was like addicted to drugs and all that. And by the time I was four, she could no longer take care of us. She also had my little brother and my little sister during this time. And it came to a point where she could no longer take care of us. And so finally, when I was about to be five, um, her sister, my aunt, stepped up to the plate and said, look, we'll take care of them. We'll take them in and we'll make sure that they're okay. And that was one of the biggest blessings in my life. Um, I'm so grateful for my aunt and my uncle um, for taking care of us. Uh, I just... I look back and I'm like, wow, that was a big thing that they did. And I'm, I'm super grateful that they did do that. Uh, so they adopted us when I was five and that's when we moved to Phelan. And, um, I grew up in Phelan and, uh, I had a good life. I was raised there. Um, but there were some things that happened, um, that were quite life impacting and during my childhood. So my aunt, which at this time I called her Thea, you know, she was my adoptive mom and um, she started limping when I was like probably in fourth going into fifth grade. She started limping all of a sudden out of nowhere and had all these doctor's appointments. And then all of a sudden she's using crutches. She didn't have an accident or anything. Just all of a sudden out of the blue, she starts limping and she's using crutches. And then one day I remember she's picking us up from the bus stop 
and she's hunched. We have a, we had a four wheel drive forerunner, Toyota forerunner and stick shift. Right. And she's, um, leaning over in the front driver's seat and she's trying to make her legs move. Her legs are not moving. So she's trying to move them with her hands, you know, her legs aren't moving. They're not working. Something's wrong. So from then on, um, she became paralyzed. She had a blood clot on her spine, if I'm not mistaken, um, which caused her to be paralyzed from the waist down. And um, this was a big life change. She had to go to the hospital a lot. She was, um, a lot of things changed. I had to kind of step up. Uh, My older sister was already out of the house um, in college. And well, my older sister was actually my cousin, but you know, I got bonus siblings from the adoption, right? So um, she was already out of the house and my older brother was kind of, he was there and he would help too. But um, when no one else was there, I was the one helping her with what she couldn't do. You know, when you lose your, the use of your legs, life changes. So that was big. And then um, in 2000, she ended up passing away. Um, my little brother and my older brother were taking her to a, a doctor's appointment and they were transporting her into the car and she said I don't feel good I don't feel good and all of a sudden she kind of just slumped over and they took her in and she had a brain aneurysm so she passed away and that was really big I had never seen my dad cry before I call him my dad because he's my dad he raised me and yes so I had never seen my dad cry before and he that day that next day he had huddled us all around him and he was just rubbing our backs and telling us you know the Thea passed away and we were like it was just a big thing we were so I don't want to say traumatized but wow that's a big thing we couldn't believe this was happening right so after that um all our family was down the hill in Chino so my dad moved us down the hill to Chino um so he could have more help because he was full-time working all the time. He was always hard worker his whole life, always working. So he needed help with us, you know, to take us to school and um, appointments and all those things. And so we moved to Chino and, um, you know, I have less and less supervision and I start getting into trouble. I start um, hanging out with the wrong people. I start getting influenced by a bunch of losers around town. You know what I'm saying? Like it wasn't a good thing, you know, and I'm still at this age looking for love. You know, my dad did the best he could and he loved us with all his heart. Um, but I, I was still looking for that void inside of me to be filled. And I was using people and things and all this sin to fill it. Um, and by the time I'm 16, I'm heavily into my sin and I, can no longer get out of it. You know, I go to my dad and I tell him I need help. So my dad, he had this man in his life, uh, fin- his uh, financial advisor, which had told him a, a story about how he, the financial advisor had sent his son to a boarding school, a Baptist boarding school in Missouri. And um, now the, the financial advisor's son had stayed on staff. He had changed his life, given his life to the Lord. And um, at the end, he had went on vacation and one on his drive home, he like crashed into some trees and he died. He passed away. This was a young kid. He was probably 19 or 20. And, you know, my financial advisor is telling my dad this whole story and something must have clicked in my dad's head where he was like, hmm, I think I need to send my daughter there. (laughs) Uh, We weren't raised Christian. We were raised Catholic. We didn't know the Bible. We didn't know the Lord. I mean, we knew Catholic ways, but, you know, we didn't know Jesus like we do today. And so my dad decided to send me there. And to me, that is, if that's not a perfectly orchestrated uh, situation, I don't know what is. If, if, if you could see the the Lord's hand in my life, that is one thing where it's like, wow, he really was in control and planning it from even way back then. And so my dad takes me to this. Well, first, my dad's, you know, he starts taking me to the doctor, to the, the store to get all these new clothes, new makeup, a new haircut. I'm like, OK, what's going on? Cool. And then he's like, OK, we're going to go check out this school in Missouri. And I'm like, OK let's go. And so we go and 
the morning that we're going to the school, my dad looks at me and he says, okay, Mija, look, we're going to leave you here. Okay. You're going to stay here. Okay. Are you mad at me? <laughs> and I'm just like, I'm 16 and I'm coming out of my sin and I'm just like foggy head. Like, I don't even know what's going on. And I'm like, okay, I'm mad. Of course. I don't want to stay in some weird place, but okay. So he leaves me there. I'm that kind of person that, okay, I'll go. Let's see what happens. Right. So this was a Baptist boarding school and they believe in the Bible. Right. So every morning, first thing after we get ready, we have Bible time. So every day we're reading the Bible, um, for 30 minutes, you know, and I'm the only one crying. I'm crying for two weeks straight every morning during Bible time. And I feel the Lord is just really, he, he was pricking my heart. He was working on me. And, um, like two weeks later, there's, I remember a chapel service, uh, a preacher preached on hell and I was scared. Uh, everything he said, I knew I was going to hell. Like there was no doubt in my mind. That's where I was going. And I knew, uh, invitation. I had to stand up and I went to the back and I'm bawling my eyes out. I, I wrote, you know, they make you write the date down in your Bible. So I have it still in my Bible, May 24th. And I accepted the Lord as my savior. And the feelings that I had before of hopelessness, of emptiness, I never had those feelings again, ever of being that empty, that void was never there again. Yes, I've had my struggles. Yes, I've had trip ups or, or hard times, but I've never felt the emptiness like I did before I accept you, accepted Jesus. That really was a life changing time in my life. Um, he came into my heart. He saved me and he gave me a new life. Um, not to say I'm not perfect. <laughs> So I stayed at the school and I graduated two years later. I'm like 18 and almost 19 when I come home. So, um, you know, I, after that I move out and stuff and I'm, you know, I'm still trying to experience life and I'm still, I want to say I'm pretty much backslid back into, um, some bad choices, some bad sins and things like that. But, um, I, I ended up moving in with my mom when I was like 19 and I'm still kind of sitting, you know, I hate to say that, but I mean, it's true. It really did happen. Um, and, um, one night I come home and my mom has her door open, which she never did. And her dogs were out and I'm like, what is going on? And I walk into her room and I see my mom slumped over on the cat on the bed. And she had long hair, like my daughter's and it was all in front of her face. Like I'll never forget. And I just knew in the instant when I turned the light on, like my mom is gone. Like that was one thing that sticks in my head, but I skipped over the part where Two weeks before that, she accepted the Lord as her savior. And so I know even though my mom passed away at such a young age, she was in heaven. She went to heaven. And I'm all when my dad and my brothers all went to visit me at the boarding school during invitation, my teacher said they raised their hand. They accepted the Lord. So I want to say all my family, I'll get to see them in heaven someday, you know, and that's an amazing thing. I'm um it says the all of heaven rejoices, even if one. So my mom was is in heaven. And I, uh, yeah, so that's one good thing I can think about. Even when I have that in my brain of my mom passing away, then the next thought is, but she's in heaven, right? We can't dwell on the horrible traumatic things because we don't want to be pulled into darkness, right? There's, we don't want that. But so that was that. And then I remember that thing that always stuck with me about the school was, find a good church, find a church that te teaches the Bible. And so I called around and I found a church in Ontario off Luke Euclid. And, um, that's where I met my husband. <laughs> um, and I never looked back. I mean, we had our struggles, we had our trials, um, we're not perfect, but Jesus is always here. And that's the one thing even if him and I were struggling, we always were like, we need to get in church. Let's go to church. Like this is where we need to be because we know it's a doctor or a hospital for us, you know, for our, our flesh and all that. So, um, yeah, that, that's pretty much the majority of it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and then what happened? <laughs> well, and then, oh, oh yeah. So, okay. We were, we, we met and then fell in love. <laughs> Um, he really did help 
me a lot. You know, he was raised in a good Christian home with values and morals, not to take anything away from my family, but um, he just had a lot of different structure and things that um, helped me to realize I need to change my life too. So in the beginning, when he first met me, I was still kind of sinning and stuff like that. And so um, I, I, I was still in my sin. And I remember I went and I was praying to God, I need to get out of this sin. I need help. Please, Jesus, whatever you could do, help me. I can't, I don't know, whatever, anything. And like a week later, I find out I'm expecting. <laughs> and that blessing that the Lord blessed me with was my Akoda. Mm-hmm. And um, after that, I never sinned again. I never, you know, went down those sin avenues, if you well, will. Certain sins, you know. Certain sins, you know. We I, all sin. <laughs> you, you know, you know, um, I'm sure you can, you can, you can fill in the blank. Um, but, you know, God did what he had to do to, to wake me up and make me realize like you you can have a better life. You know, I guess I always struggle with sin. I, I do struggle with my flesh. That's my life versus Psalm 73, 26, my flesh and my heart fail, faileth, but God is my strength and my portion forever. So no matter what sin you're in, God can help you. God can get you out of it. And he will, if you rely on him. And so me and my husband, after that, you know, we got, we went to free indeed, mm-hmm. right? That's yep. uh, his friend. Yeah. Uh, both of our friends. Terry. Terry. He knew Terry through a different, like through church. Uh, yeah. Terry and I used to go to, he used to go to our church. Yeah. And I knew Terry. In Ontario. Yeah. I knew Terry from a mutual friend going to Chino High School. So it's like, come on. And the Terry l- knew Joe James and I played with Joe James at some place in Temecula oh, actually yeah. before that. Mm-hmm. And then that's how Joe James knew that, or Terry knew that Joe James knew me. Yeah. And then he was like, oh, you should come to the church or or the 4th of July thing. Oh, yeah. And then we went to the 4th of July thing um, with all the free indeed people and Kathy Penny and all them. And (laughs) um, yeah. And then ever since then, we started going to free indeed. And um, Pastor Pete even uh, was um, not mentoring, counseling us. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then... From there, we got married. I mean, we kind of did it out of order, but the Lord knew. I mean, we were we were in counseling. We were abstaining. We were doing what we were supposed to do to get right. You know, yes, you may slip just like David, you know, but you can do right even if you fall, you know. So we went to free indeed. And then, um, yeah, and then that's pretty much the start of our journey mm-hmm. like and we started our family our our married life and it's been a journey an amazing journey um i just want to encourage anyone one that's newly married or gonna get married put jesus first um we're just imperfect humans but jesus is the rock and that's one thing like in our home it it's peaceful i don't know i feel like Jesus is here. You know what I mean? Like I never feel stressed out. I mean, we have worries and struggles, but he always reminds me like God's got us. He's got us this far and he's not going to let us down. Trust and obey. I always say for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus. (laughs) (laughs) But yeah, so that's pretty much my story. Um, And I want to give God all the glory. (laughs) Well, I love it. And I love you. (laughs) (laughs) Well, I love you more. (laughs) Is there anything else that you want to say? Um, no, I think that was the gist of it. 